Hey guys, today I would like to continue talking about the Magic Lantern RAW video processing software. A few months ago I've made a short review of the four main programs for RAW video conversion, and already at that time I sincerely sympathized the newest but rapidly growing program, MLV App. Since that time things changed a lot over the past six months. This program was finally officially released, later it received some significant updates and improvements, and so I thought that now it's time to refresh my review of the MLV app, create a more in-depth video and make the overview of its new features as well. If you prefer brief and quick reviews, or if you are not yet familiar with the MLV app at all, I will put a link to my previous review of the earlier version of MLV app in the description below, and also there will be links to download this program and to the Magic Lantern forum where it is discussed. If you want more details, then watch this in-depth review. To be honest, I do it primarily for myself, since I recently gave away my last Canon camera and therefore, in the coming year I will be unable to shoot or process new Magic Lantern RAW video. And uh, to save for myself the accumulated knowledge about my favorite program, I want to record a detailed video now, so as later, when I can return to work with the raw material from the Canon DSLRs, it was easier for me to restore this knowledge and not to study again the forums searching for all necessary information. If I mess something up, you are welcome to comment and correct me, because everything I know about this program is from my own experience or from the Magic Lantern forum, because the comprehensive user guide for MLV app still doesn't exist. So MLV app, what is it today? The program recently became much bigger. The toolbar doesn't fit the screen anymore. The number of buttons and sliders has increased significantly, but it still contains only necessary features. First of all, let's load raw video into the program window. There are three ways to do it by clicking on the import icon on the toolbar or in the file menu import MLV or by simply dragging and dropping files from Explorer or Finder into the program window directly. A few words about the interface. At the top of the window we have a main menu, below there are icons of the frequently used functions, next there is the timecode display and then the timeline navigation buttons. In the center we have a large preview window of the active file, Underneath is the waveform of the audio track. At the left there's the current session window. By the way, it can be located at the bottom as well, but I feel comfortable when it's at its default position. The current session displays MLV files loaded into the app and they can be displayed as thumbnails by default or as a list, which is better when there are lots of files or as a list with small thumbnails. On the right side of the screen we have the main toolbar, where a lot of buttons and sliders are grouped into logical blocks. By double-clicking on the panel you can detach it and move it to any place on your screen or to additional second monitor. Now let's go through all the menus from right to left and top to bottom and see what we've got there. The file menu contains everything related to the current session and the raw files loaded in it. Create a new session, save a current session, open the previously saved one, etc. By the way, in the latest version of app there appeared a protection against accidental termination of the current session. Earlier it was possible to spend much time processing tons of files and incidentally by mistake close the program, just bang and all the work gone, without saving. Now, before exiting, MLV app will ask you if you want to save on exit or exit without saving. This is very helpful. Next there's the Generate Map Files option. These are index files, which, if checked, are automatically created at the moment when each of the files in the current session is loaded into the program. I mean loaded by double-clicking on the file preview, after which the clip opens in the main window. Map files are stored in the same folder as the MLV source files. The map files do not affect the current session at all. But when you reopen a previously saved session, for which the index files have been already generated, the MLV clips are loaded almost instantly. This is especially useful for long and high resolution video clips. Of course, if you have a beefy computer system and short MLVs of just few seconds, there's no need to mess with map files at all. Talking about speed, the MLV app works very quickly on even old computers and laptops. The program doesn't use a graphic card for processing, it utilizes the power of CPU. Let's go on. We have two interesting options, Final Cut Pro XML, Import and Selection Assistant. 
This is a long story to tell about the proxy workflow. That's why I would like to skip this topic now and tell you about it in detail at the end of this video. In the description below there will be a time code. Who is interested, do not forget to watch it later. Next, clip information. And this is pretty obvious. This window displays detailed metadata of the selected clip. The export selected clips item is duplicated on the toolbar and it starts rendering the selected clips from the current session according to the predefined settings in the export settings menu. Export settings are also duplicated on the toolbar. Let's talk about export settings in more detail. The choice of different codecs is extensive here, including all the popular codecs for editing and viewing. It is possible to export DNG sequences uncompressed or compressed without loss of quality for further processing in DaVinci Resolve or Adobe Camera Raw, as well as TIFF and PNG sequences or even you can resave the clip in the same MLV format. By the way, before exporting you can view the file and trim the length of it, selecting in and out points so that not to store unnecessary gigabytes. Each export option has its own additional options below it, which I advise you to change only if you know exactly why. Underneath we can choose the method of debayerization, but the optimal method for the majority of clips is a maze, selected by default. The resize checkbox allows you to adjust the size of exported RAW video because most Canon cameras running Magic Lantern firmware output resolution that differs from the standard parameters. Different resize algorithms are also at your disposal, but as usual the standard is bicubic. Is it worth changing the frame rate at this stage? It's up to you, but I think it's better if necessary to do it later, in the NLE program when making the final edit. The drop-down list of MOIR or aliasing filters contains four different methods. They start working at the time when the indicator of the export process reaches 100%, and at that moment the process seems to freeze for a long time. This is normal, the application of filters is not quick. The result, in my personal opinion, is not always obvious. I tried different methods and carefully checked the final result. Well, often MOIR is still there, so do not expect a miracle. It is better to deal with MOIR manually while adjusting the conversion parameters of each file, and we'll talk about it later. For Mac users, there are also several post-export commands that I personally do not use and cannot comment on. So, after setting the export parameters, you can press the export button and select the folder to start the rendering process. And the last options in the file menu are Reveal in Finder, Open with External Application and Select External Application. Some people prefer to estimate MLV files from missing focus, composition or other problems before they start processing the files, and they don't like to do it in the MLV app window, because the video is often played with jerks not quite smoothly, so some of us prefer to do it in another player, for example ML Raw Viewer. In the latest versions of the MLV app we have the opportunity to select external application and view the clip in it without leaving the app. But I don't have the ML Raw Viewer installed, I'm quite satisfied with the preview in the app itself, so I do not use the option open with external application. The edit menu is dedicated to working with clips and their conversion settings. In the MLV app, the entire set of adjustments made in the program for each clip is called Receipt, and of course, for your convenience and speed, it's possible to copy the adjustments from one clip to the clipboard and apply them to another clip or several clips or maybe all clips of the current session. And if you want to exchange settings between different sessions, we just need to export the settings received to a separate file on the hard disk, which can be imported for new sessions and clips they contain. You can copy all the adjustments or the part of the adjustments as you like. For example, we applied a LUT to a selected clip and want to do the same for all the others. Click copy, then select other files and click paste. As you can see, now the same LUT is applied to all our clips. If we do not like the result of our adjustments, it's very convenient to reset them once to defaults, using the reset function reset receipt. Well, there are also options to select all, comment A and delete the selected clips. I think everything is clear here. Let's go further. Playback menu. Here are buttons to navigate through the timeline. And then it's also possible to load the previous or next clip of the session. By the way, instead of pressing J and K to load clip into the viewer window, you can just double click on it with your mouse. So, what else should I mention here? By choosing drop frame mode, you enable playback of the clip with frame skipping, so we can achieve a smoother playback of your video in real time and with sound, if suddenly, in normal mode, without skipping frames. 
it plays with jerks on your not very powerful computer. The debayer for playback setting is also aimed for the fastest preview of the clip on the fly in the main window. By default, there is a simple algorithm bilinear. It is not the highest quality, but it's fast. Simple is even faster and less detailed, and the none option gives a monochrome preview. For me, the bilinear option is optimal. In the pause mode, the program uses a much better algorithm of debayerization, a maze, which allows you to perform the most subtle conversion adjustments under careful visual control. The clip magnification parameters are also duplicated under the right mouse button. There are two options, 100% and fit to the current window. The mouse wheel is also active in 100% mode, so you can set any scale you like. With the right click of the mouse, we have a zebra display. It reveals under and overexposed areas of the image. Together with the histogram, it allows you to fine-tune the exposure corrections. In the view menu, we select and customize the interface elements. Here you can choose which of the video scopes will be displayed, a histogram by default, or a waveform, parade, or vector scope. A very useful checkbox by default appeared in the latest versions of the program. It is the protection against accidental closing of the program without saving. Well, if the extremely cautious program annoys you with those questions, a reminder can always be disabled. And the last thing I want to mention here is help. It's here at last, and it's quite useful. I recommend using it. Now let's go to the right side of the program window, and that's where the fun begins. The main toolbar divided into categories. The first category, raw correction, is responsible for the settings that are made with raw material before its debayerization. It is important to understand that if we plan to continue color correction in another application, for instance Resolve, and for this purpose, we plan to export files from MLV app as DNG sequences. You should be aware that everything we change and adjust in the app, except the raw correction tab, will not be saved on export. I mean, only those adjustments made in the raw correction panel will be exported. When you export video to any other common codecs, like H.264 or ProRes, all the corrections will be saved, for sure. Magic Lantern raw video unfortunately carries a lot of issues, and the raw correction tab is just the place where we are trying to handle them. Let's start from the top. Dark frame subtraction. Oh, this is not gonna be a quick story. I think let's save it for the end of this video. In the description below will be the timecode. Who is interested, look through it, and let's now go further on. Fix focus dots. Those of you who use a Canon camera which creates pink dots from the dual pixel autofocus are familiar with this problem. I have Canon 7D, and there is no such a problem, I cannot show you. But MLV app successfully removes such dots and uh, does it by identifying the specific camera from which the video is loaded. The program loads a map of these focus dots depending on the camera model and removes them selectively without affecting the surround image pixels. There is also crop rec switch for video shot in crop mode and two different interpolation methods. Try it, it works. Next comes fix bad pixels, those hot or bad pixels that I think are familiar to all the users of ML RAW video. Here we have an example of such a pixel. We press the button and the pixel disappears. If it doesn't disappear immediately, as in another example, then we have another option, force and two modes, normal and aggressive, and also two methods of interpolation. Try, compare and choose the best combination for your particular case. Chroma Smooth is a universal tool for color noise elimination. By the way, it works also with focusing dots. If my memory doesn't fail me, before the MLV app appeared, in other raw video conversion programs this Chroma Smooth tool was previously used as the primary method of removing focus dots. So here is an example of a really noisy video, a lot of color noise, just a bunch of color pixels in the shadows. We try different algorithms, 2x2 two two pixels, 3x3, three 5x5. Three, five five. I would say that 3x3 three three works most noticeably, reducing the level of noise in my case. If the previous tool Fix Focus Dots deals selectively with the focusing dots and doesn't affect the entire frame, this Chroma Smooth function affects the entire area of the frame. Vertical Stripes is an artifact in the highlights produced by some models of Canon cameras, and those who have it, they understand what we are talking about. My camera doesn't have this defect, and I can only use the help article to show an example of vertical stripes in the sky. What I don't have at all in my Canon 7D is dual ISO, but 
All the necessary tools for it are available in MLV app, of course. And so, just for example, I took a piece of dual ISO footage provided by other users of this program on the Magic Lantern forum. As you can see, the clip was shot by Canon EOS M, and if you have properly set this function in camera and everything is correctly configured before shooting, then the processing in the MLV app will not be difficult. Just activate the dual ISO mode and the program produces a great result that we can adjust by changing the exposure or setting the white balance to our taste. All the details of dual ISO processing are constantly discussed in the forum on the Magic Lantern homepage. The result is truly impressive and uh, made me once again regret selling my baby EOS M a couple of years ago. Pattern noise. And this is, I thought, exactly for me, because that bending noise, its vertically striped noise in the shadows, drives me almost mad. But unfortunately, my hopes for this function did not come true. As you can see, the activation of the pattern noise feature perfectly blurs striped noise in my image. But at the same time, there appear horizontal artifacts that are ugly and noticeable. Not working, in my case. Maybe someone else will use it successfully. And the last thing about raw correction, raw black level and white level. These parameters are automatically set by the program, based on the particular camera model. If, however, the program is wrong, we have the opportunity to adjust these levels manually. How do you know that the default settings are incorrect? You will see specific green or purple shadows and pink highlights. Unfortunately, or contrary-wise fortunately, over the past couple of years I never had a raw video from my camera with green shadows. But I found an example, captured three years ago. It is not raw, I didn't keep the original file, it's already converted to H.264, but I think it clarifies the issue. At that time I suffered a lot from that problem. With the raw level there also may be mistakes. For example, we have an overexposed area, we are trying to restore it, I'm getting a little ahead of myself for a while, and we are reducing the brightness using the exposure slider. There appears a pink color in the area of overexposure, which indicates that some of the information in some color channels is lost. But here we are rescued by highlight reconstruction checkbox. It's restoring some information using the other color channels, in which, after all, some information still remains. As you can see, the color has been recovered. But in case the pink color is still there after highlight reconstruction, it's a sign of the white level set incorrectly by the program. We are free to adjust raw white level slider. It can make everything right. We have finished the raw correction tab. Below is a tool for trimming the clip from the beginning and from the end, which is convenient for a rough cut of the clip so as not to render extra material. Select the in point, then the out point and then the program will render only the selected area. Some of us prefer to prepare the material this way in the raw processing program, so that later, during the final edit in NLE, not to waste time. By the way, having set in and out points, you can export the clip in original MLV format, just not to store extra gigabytes. Then, we choose the algorithm of debayerization. We have already mentioned this previously today. By default comes the highest quality amaze. I advise you to leave it as it is. Sometimes, for a very noisy video shot at high ISO values, IGV gives the best result. In short, try yourself and choose your favorite. Those who are interested in the theory of this I address to Magic Lantern Forum, where the comparison of algorithms of debayerization is discussed and explained. Underneath there is a processing tab, where all the necessary tools for working with exposure, white balance, color correction and so on are grouped. Some of the sliders here are absolutely universal for any conversion software. I will not dwell on them. And some require commands. For example, the white balance here can be set with a classic eyedropper. It is all standard. But not only on the white or medium grey object. It also can use the skin tone, as in the example with human faces in the frame, which is very useful. Specific for the MLV app is a series of sliders – Dark Strength, Dark Range, Light Strength, Light Range and Lighten. Pay attention to them and try to adjust them, watching the histogram and the image in the main preview window at the same time. There is nothing complicated, you just have to get used to them a little. As regards the sliders highlights and shadows in MLV app, I would advise to touch them with caution. They don't always work great at extreme values and, unlike Adobe Camera Raw, for example, do not create a miracle. 
By the way, if you want to reset any parameter to the default value, just double click on the slider. It works as in other similar programs. Curves. Here they are. I envy people making color correction with curves, especially if they understand well what they are doing. To my shame, I know the theory, but in practice I prefer to use sliders. Highlight reconstruction checkbox we have already mentioned today, but let's once again repeat it. If we have an overexposed clip, we begin to decrease the exposure of the image, hoping to recover highlights. Often it leads to a pink color in the overexposed area, which indicates that some of the information in the highlights in some color channels is lost. That's when we appeal to the checkbox of highlight reconstruction, which often saves the situation and restores the information from other color channels, where some of the information in highlights is still preserved. Camera metrics. By default, this checkbox is always on. This is a color calibration that is done in the MLV app automatically and in most cases gives the correct representation of colors. It is recommended to always keep the feature enabled. Sometimes, in some clips shot at color temperatures below 4000 Kelvin degrees, the camera metrics may not give the correct result. Anyway, you can always disable enable it and compare the color. Below we have got a drop-down menu for selecting the processing color profiles. This is a tool for manipulating the gamma curve of the image. And those who want to dive deeper into the essence, I recommend to visit the Magic Lantern forum, where it is discussed and explained. Now I will only say that I often use the profile standard, tone mapped and film, depending on the exposure of a particular clip. The parameter tone map allows you to perfectly protect the highlights in clips with high dynamic range. Standard is more suitable for clips with low contrast and film lies somewhere in between. As you can see, these first three profiles allow us to perform fine tuning manually using the sliders discussed above. Apart there stand the so-called logarithmic profiles, Alexa log, Cineon log and others. After applying them, as we can see, most of the sliders above are locked not allowing us to make additional custom settings. This is done to accurately match the selected logarithmic color space on exit of the program when exporting, since if the user has chosen such a profile, then in theory it is assumed that he knows exactly what he is doing and it is meant that he intends to continue color correction in another, more advanced grading application. Once again, the most versatile profiles for me are film and tone mapped. I usually use them. The Details tab is responsible for image detail. The sharpen slider is familiar to everyone, I think. But increasing the sharpness, we affect not only useful information on the image, but also, for example, the color moir overlying and, of course, digital color noise too. Here, for example, moir is clearly visible among the pine tree needles and sharpening only increases the artifact. To overcome it, there is a checkbox chroma separation, and if it's checked, the sharpness affects only the luminance information, without affecting the color channels. More than that, if we use also the chroma blur radius parameter, we are able to wash out some color artifacts of the image, and moir will be suppressed, despite the general increase of sharpness. As you can see before and after, the effect is obvious. The same thing happens with moir on fine textures. Here chroma blur radius improves the situation a lot. But with this slider, you have to be careful. Look what happened to the vivid colors in the image. They are also blurred and washed out. So, in the situation of severe moir, it's necessary to carefully choose the optimal balance between sharpness and blur amount for the best result. Below we have a denoise filter option with a customizable size of the impact area. This is a very simple filter, also known as median, which is familiar to all Photoshop users, for example. Here we have an underexposed clip, where we brighten the shadows by four exposure steps. And there immediately appears a harsh color noise. What we can do? Well, first of all, let's use the chroma blur radius slider. It reduces the color noise, blurring all the color details too. Secondly, do not forget about the chroma smooth feature in the raw correction tab, which can be helpful too. As you can see, the effect of chroma smooth resembles the effect of chroma blur radius. Well, finally, we can use the denoise filter, or median, in other words. The bigger the area of influence here, the more plastic appearance of the image, and it's necessary to be careful about it and choose the adequate strength of the filter as well.
obviously this is not quite as magical as uh, for example a neat video plugin but still something can be done and noise can be reduced even in such an extreme example which i artificially created now for demonstration purposes next we have hsl curves hue versus hue hue versus saturation hue versus luminance these tools are not unique to the mlv app and everyone who uses davinci resolve lumetri color in adobe premiere or the corresponding tool in the Final Cut Pro, all are perfectly familiar with these curves. So let's keep going further. Below is a linear gradient tool, a new feature in the MLV app. It allows you to apply gradient to the image and smoothly darken or lighten the selected part of the image, as well as change the contrast in it. What is look up table, I think everyone already knows for sure. And here too, you can apply a lot and adjust the intensity of it. There is also a small set of color filters built into the program. I don't use them often, but such a tool exists. Try and check different options. And the last tab at the very bottom is the transformation. It allows you to stretch the image horizontally or vertically, which is very useful when shooting, for example, anamorphic lenses. Uh, here we stretch horizontally or when shooting Magic Lantern slow more when you have to stretch vertically. By the way, if the program detects Magic Lantern slow more according to the camera metadata, I mean 48, 50, 60 frame per second footage, it automatically tries to stretch the image vertically. It is necessary because of line skipping when recording high frame rate video. So the program automatically stretches the clip height. By the way, there is a separate video on my channel about shooting slow-mo with Magic Lantern. I recommend to look it through if you are interested. Well, the option to rotate the image upside down is also very useful when shooting, for example, with an inverted static cam from the ground level. So we've looked through all the tools available in the program. Let me remind you once again at the end that when you export from the MLV app in MLV format, only clip cutting and cutout points are saved. When exporting to DNG sequence, which is usually done for further adjustments in more powerful color correction software, all the changes we made in the raw correction tab are saved during export. And of course, clip cut in and cut out points are also saved on export. But everything else is not. The full set of corrections will be exported if you choose the common codecs like H.264, Apple ProRes, DNX HD or sequences of TIFFs, JPEGs and so on. That's all for now. And let me remind you that I promised to tell a few words about proxy workflow in MLV app and also about noise reduction by dark frame subtraction method. If you are interested, stay tuned for a while. So what is the workflow with proxy files in MLV app? Suppose you have shot a bunch of clips in Magic Lantern raw video format. You have to convert them in MLV app into video files and then finally arrange them together in a non-linear editing program into the final movie. One of the possible workflows in this case is the following. You can make batch conversion of all your files at once without any adjustments. To do that, you just load the entire folder of MLVs in the MLV app and in the export settings choose for example a convenient and easy to edit codec Apple ProRes 422 proxy. You can also resize the clips to decrease original resolution for example to 2080 by 720 for even more easy editing and run the batch export to a folder called for example proxies and leave them alone for the whole night <laughs> Waking up in the morning, we've got export finished, so we can launch our NLE, in my case Final Cut Pro, and create a project with the settings that we want to have in the final video file. For example, in my case, 2.5K. Then we import our converted proxy clips, we have 11 of them for now, so we drag them all to the timeline, or any way else as you prefer to handle clips while editing, and begin the montage. Delete the necessary clips, cut in and out, move and swap the clips, so do everything you need for your edit. When the overall appearance of your montage satisfies you, we click Export XML from the menu, save the file and open the MLV app again. And this time we run Final Cut Pro XML Import Assistant from the file menu. Point to our XML file from the Final Cut Pro and next we open the folder where the original MLV clips are. The assistant will perform a match and select only those MLV clips that we included in the final edit. As you remember, we exported 11 proxy files from MLV app 
and after editing we have only 8 clips left. These 8 clips the assistant will now reopen in MLV app. Now we can already perform full custom conversion adjustments according to our taste for each file. Now, just to speed the process, I will apply one LUT for all clips. Let the colors be insane, it's even better for our examples, so as we could easily guess where the proxy files are and where are the finally graded clips in the maximum quality and full resolution. That's all, we now have all graded. Next, we select all the files in the current session and in the export settings we already choose the top quality or almost the highest quality codec as you like, but be sure to check the output resolution of the clips. This time we want it to be the same as in the final project resolution. And now we run the export into a separate folder. This export can last much longer than the first time, as we have made many changes and adjustments to the clips in the app. At the end of the export we will go back to Final Cut Pro and simply relink the clips in the timeline from the original proxy clips to the finally graded high resolution files in the original media folder. That's all, our previous proxy files were successfully replaced on the timeline by insane colored clips in full resolution 2.5K. No problem. And the next file menu item, Final Cut Pro XML Selection Assistant, is a little bit different. Suppose you have already opened a session with the same 11 sourced clips. It's much worse than there are not 11, but 11,000 clips opened. But this is where the file selection assistant will help us. We specify the path to the XML file created in the Final Cut Pro and the assistant selects only those files that are used in the final edit, in our case 8 files out of 11 original. Or you can invert the selection to select on the contrary the unused files, as you prefer. Now you can either export the selected used clips or delete the selected unused ones, in case you inverted the selection in the previous step. So that briefly is the proxy workflow in MLV app. Well, now we have to talk about the dark frame subtraction algorithm inside the raw correction tab in MLV app. This is only one of the noise reduction options used in this application. But first let's decide what is the digital color noise and how to deal with it. There can be stable in time static noise and changing in time temporal noise monochrome, luminance noise and color chroma noise, as well as diffuse uniform noise and noise forming a clear structure or texture pattern noise. I think any one of you after watching a noisy clip in time will be able to distinguish all these types of noise. So dark frame subtraction is focused on the elimination of static noise, for example hot or bad pixels and other image artifacts that are always in the same place on all the frames of the clip. The algorithm requires some preparation. In addition to your normal video clips, we must capture short clips, just two or three hundred frames is enough, with a closed lens cap. And they must be shot in the same conditions and with the same camera settings as the normal clips. Now I have just opened such a session in MLV app. As you can see, after each clip there comes a black clip to perform the analysis by the program to create the average noise map that will be subtracted later. Here, for example, we have a clip shot at 1600 ISO and the red hot spots are quite visible. We open a corresponding black frame. If we add some brightness, we can see how noisy it is. In fact, there is no need to touch the exposure here and no need to adjust anything at all in this clip. Except if it is too long, you can cut in and out points to achieve two or three hundred frames. It should be immediately exported with the MLV average frame setting. Usually, the length of the clip of 10-15 seconds is quite sufficient for the averaging process. After export, we reload our normal clip and click on the yellow folder icon on the dark frame subtraction toolbar. Then we specify the path to the averaged black frame and apply it. As you can see, the image has changed a bit, it became a little brighter and the hot pixels have completely disappeared. So, it's not a kind of magic of course, but it's just another tool provided by MLV app for noise reduction purposes, along with others that we've already reviewed today. Well, that's all for today. It turned out to be a long video. Thank you all for your attention and patience. Good luck and see you again. Bye!